hello beautiful people welcome back to my channel welcome back to another episode of love beyond borders now if you're new here and you're seeing my pretty face for the very first time my name is serame and um, i'm south african and if you've missed previous episodes of love beyond borders please do catch up you're gonna have a lot of fun learn everything african love african culture and everything in between okay now today i'm here to bust a misconception about my brothers okay about my south african brothers that they don't marry women from outside of south african borders is that true Mm -mm, I don't think so because on today's episode I have Tete Makele who is a Congolese national and is married to a South African man okay now we're gonna be talking about the cultural difference um, the cultural shock South African men and her experience being a Congolese na national and living in South Africa and married to a South African man now stay tuned and remember one love one Africa um hi tete thank you so much for coming through welcome to love beyond borders how are you Woo! doing <laughs> i'm good i'm good thank you i've been waiting for this moment so i'm super excited to be part of it <laughs> i'm so glad to have you here finally and um you are in an inter-african marriage right yes! love yes! beyond borders <laughs> yes. Yes. and you are you are congolese and your husband is south african right yes. So before we go into, you know, the story of how you guys became Love Beyond Borders, let's first talk about and get to know you better. Talk about your upbringing. Talk about how you came um, to South Africa and your fam family dynamics. Um, tell us a bit more about that. Ooh, okay, where do I start? So we, we came to South Africa in 1996, if I'm not mistaken, 95, 96, around there. Wow. From a family of nine kids because my dad yeah <laughs> there's nine of us so my sister is the eldest and I'm the youngest and then we have just boys in between um yeah okay. so when we first came we lived in Sydney that's why my accent is the way it is <laughs> you lived in where I lived in in Durban in Sydney it's a colored area oh so, okay okay yeah that's why oh but, yeah, yeah that nothing more to it <laughs> <laughs> so you were very young when you came to South Africa, right? Yes, yes, I was very wow, young. So that wow, wow. the only home I know. Wow, wow, wow. That's amazing. All right, so now you are in a Love Beyond Borders type of situation. <laughs> okay, so how did, you, how did you meet your husband? I mean, he's from Northwest, right? And you are from Durban. How did you guys meet, girl? Bro, like, it's so weird, right? <laughs> So I've always known of my husband because mm -hmm. my best friend um, is his cousin. So oh, from like okay. 2008, we've always just known of each other, but it was never like attraction. We never spoke or anything. It was just like, this is my cousin. Oh, okay. Hi. And you know, that was it. And then mm -hmm. it was graduation. So the girl had graduated. It was 2017, December. And for mm -hmm. some reason, that time when I visited the Northwest, she only spoke about him. My cousin this, my cousin wow. this, my cousin this. And I'm just like, okay. Then I'm like, I can't wait to see him. So at graduation, I saw him walk in and I turned to her and I was like, girl, my man is here. And she's like, no, you can't do that. You guys are family. I'm like, eh, eh, eh. no, I speak to Mahili, you guys speak to Tawana. We are definitely yeah. family. You know, mm -hmm. and then, yeah, you know, it happened. We went. Wow. We went <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you are here, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you ever think you you get married to a South African guy living in South Africa, being a Congolese national? Did you think you'd probably go home or meet a Congolese national in South Africa? Did you ever think you'll date or get married to a South African man? Funny thing is, I don't think I can answer that because I never thought I would marry Perry. <laughs> you know? For real? I mean, yeah, because I mean, after I had my child and I had been, you know, deceived in my previous relationship, I had given up on love, you know? So I, I was wow. not interested. All I wanted to be was this 
good mom you know give my son mm-hmm. the best he can get you know and just be a good human so when it came to marriage and stuff like that it was just like ah you know who's going to marry a woman with a child because that's how yeah. we grow up you know if you have a child who's going to want to marry you you know your used goods or whatever it is So sure. when I met my husband and we started a conversation and he was like I'm going to marry you I'm just like stop wasting my time. <laughs> like what are you saying? You know because yeah, it was yeah. really like something I expected or something mm. I was waiting for. You know it just wow. Mm, yeah. Mm. Okay. So um you guys are now married. How did Bruh. you introduce him? How did you introduce him to your family and how did your family receive him? <laughs> how did these people who show you flames? So um <laughs> I go home and I tell my mom, my aunt and my uncle that hey, yeah. so I met, you know, my boyfriend wants to meet you guys and because mm-hmm. we had already discussed the whole marriage thing when he met my parents. Um wow. so we already had like a he had already asked me to be his wife, you know, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so um yeah, so I go home excited. <laughs> I got a man, I'm fucking married. And then the first person is like, "Where's he from?" like South Africa. But we it's like the thing thieves you know like they are thieves so that that because of this <laughs> so my uncle was like please tell me he doesn't like have like a scar on his face he's got a oh, rough face. <laughs> I was just like no <laughs> and it was so weird but it took it took a moment for them to just like you know accept you know kind of like yeah. sink in and for them to see me happy and then be like okay, yeah. we can wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Do you think it was going to be different if it, if it was a Congolese man? Of course. Of course it would have been different. Yeah. Maybe they would have yeah. wanted to find out about his background, but I mean my parents mm-hmm. didn't even ask about his background where he lived. The first thing mm-hmm. they were just like South African, you know, because mm-hmm. I mean being Congolese there's a whole lot of uh, you know yeah. <laughs> about, about yeah. South African people. So that was the mm-hmm. first thing, you know, is he abusive? Will he hit you? This and that. Oh wow. That. So mm. yeah. <laughs> Wow. Okay, mm. and I, I guess I just been concerned parents. I mean, every parents just wants to make sure their child is safe and they're happy and so yeah. forth. Now, um how did he introduce you to his family and how did they receive you? Oh man, they were so chill that even felt bad because he had met my family before I had met him. His and his yeah. family was good, you know, we didn't have any problems. They were so mm. excited. Oh, like I remember my mother-in-law may her may her soul rest in peace wherever mm. we went. This is my daughter Lo. She's from Congo. Oh, this is my daughter Lo. Oh, that is so sweet. Like, that is so sweet. The Congo part. <laughs> mhm. Yeah, and, it's a thing. Okay. That's that's actually very beautiful. I like that she embraced you and she was just so proud to have oh, a Congolese Macord. <laughs> But <laughs> I I'm just so interested to know what what was your view or did you have any view since you grew up in South Africa I mean you only came here when you were very young did you have a view of how South African men are like your parents were saying is he going to abuse you is he going to beat you did you have those kind of fears meeting him or you know deciding to get get married with him did you have those kind of fears You know I'd be lying if I said I didn't have them because I mm. have cousins who have dated South African men and came home with blue eyes and broken ribs so it was something that I was also worried yeah. about you know but yeah. at yeah. the same time you know you don't choose you don't choose who to love you know love just yeah. chooses yeah. for you so for me it was a thing of if it happens that he becomes one of those men that Congolese people think South African men are I had mm. every right to leave him you know so that was yeah, the thing absolutely. I had to fear yeah. but I knew that you know this person really loved me and I hoped that he wouldn't do that to me you know and mm. let me mm. just put it up there he don't do that stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's with the michael <laughs> I'll take it for him <laughs> all right mm. Excuse me. All right, um Tete, and how was the marriage Lobola thing? Did you guys have Lobola? How did you guys do it in DRC? Yeah, and I mean, you have to incorporate your culture with his. How did you guys do it? No. No, no, no. My family was not having this incorporate thing. It was strictly Congolese or you're not getting married at all. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> 
I'm for real. Like my mom, my parents was just like, no, 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 no. We're not gonna do this in our culture. When a guy marries a woman, he follows her tradition. So we are not mm. gonna come and try mix things because we're in South Africa. He stole the flower. Mm. He wants to take the flower. Then he's going to follow the instructions that come with the flower. So that's what happened. We did not do. anything you know regarding i don't wow. even know how some other people get married because um i wasn't wow. exposed to that we did it the congolese way wow wow oh wow, that's My beautiful and how again <laughs> and your and his parents didn't have any issues with um oh, your there was a lot of back and forth back and forth yeah. you know, a lot of back and forth but eventually they were just like it's okay you know it's it's whatever mm-hmm. you know, yeah not, if they can if they don't want to compromise and our son really loves her i mean mm-hmm. you're not going to lose anything but just doing what they like so yeah and it was quick wow. so we want to get over wow. now yeah i mean yeah, girl. In one day. <laughs> wow that's actually beautiful that's actually beautiful now <clears throat> when you are around your congolese people when they hear that you're with a south african man how's the reaction do they treat you differently like for example as i'm south african i'm married to a nigerian man you know south africans tend to judge you and look at you in a certain way yeah. you know how's that for you as a congolese national when congolese people find out that you're married to a south african mm. man i hate it i hate it i hate it because they have this thing when something bad like maybe let's say i'll give an example maybe i don't mm-hmm. know they saw they watched a video where uh, 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 an, a foreigner got hurt by a, um, a south african man the mm-hmm. thing your husband's brothers no it's not no. your brothers <laughs> you understand that nobody know each other bro and then when we are like when i visit home it's a thing of oh um he hasn't cheated on you yet has he You know, oh, wow. he hasn't been with you yet. Is he really good in bed? Is he his banana size? You know, is he satisfying you? Is he doing this? And I'm just like, guys, be happy. Like, can we just concentrate yeah. on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People sure. People are nosy out there. People are very nosy. Wow. Okay, Tete. And how is the um? What was your culture shock being with um? You know, a South African man. Your top three culture shocks, guys. I think the first thing is this Mabele thing. I can't get over it. Like I don't know how people do it. Like Mabele for me was just like are we getting sand? Like what's going on here? <laughs> you know that. So, and then there's this other one I can't pronounce it but I'm going to try. I think it's called Try girl. So oh, <laughs> oh, I I know I know I know what you mean. I also I can't remember how to pronounce it but I know what you mean. It's like shredded meat. Right? Yes. And I was just like, yes. why are we having meat as porridge? Like, no, meat should be meat. So I was just like, no, guys, that that was just, that was just a no thing. And in this whole thing of wearing a blanket, like every time I have to, because I'm married, every time I like some yeah, like yeah. a wedding, um I have to be part of the the group of elders who, you know, like give um marriage advice and I have to put on a blanket no matter how yeah. hot it is. I went to a wedding and it was blazing hot. Stupid. But I, I had my blanket on. <laughs> <laughs> what you gotta do? What you gotta do, girl? <laughs> When you go to Rome, you do what the Romans are doing, okay? When you go to oh, Northwest, you Romans. do what the Ghana people are doing. <laughs> so much. <laughs> okay. And um, you are Swahili, yes. and your husband is um Zoana, right? How how do you guys communicate so how do you guys communicate in in English? Um not really what we do is because we have a child in the picture we try our best yeah. for him to learn both sides okay so what this is on a part he's really great he learns it on the streets and that's great so at home mm. um what we do is my husband speaks to Tuana to me and I speak Swahili to him so our listening oh. skills are really good <laughs> I listen wow. skills are really good like I can really hear you know Sotswana and he can hear Swahili but when it comes to mm. responding honey mm the problem we're working on that we're still working on that but yeah so even even with my son we I do speak Swahili to him and he speaks um Sotswana to everybody else even to me um yeah mm. it's just uh, <laughs> I mean I couldn't even yeah. pronounce my own surname <laughs> <laughs> And then um do you ever feel left out when you are at your in-laws maybe and they're having a gathering or whatsoever and they're speaking Sotswana and you just like yeah and i just they're like 
<laughs> and then he has to feel bad for me or somebody has to so the funny thing is when we go to even to church and stuff my son translates mm. for me it's like oh mommy no they said this and this and this like if i can't if i can't understand like maybe if it passed me it's like then i ask him money what did i say and it's like no mommy they said yeah. this and this and this. so that's good but i always try my best to when i go to family gathering to always keep mm-hmm. busy with something so then i don't have to sit oh. down and just like, yeah yeah <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Um now I'm, I'm I want to talk about the myths, right? I mean a lot of Congolese people say a lot of things about South African men, right? There's a lot of myths around, you know, South African men. What mm. are the myths that you have discovered to be true or false about South African men? True or false? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so first let me address this because <laughs> Let me just address this. If you are not, not not even Congolese, doesn't even have to be like you don't have to be Congolese, but if you're a foreign woman and you're looking to get married to a South African man, you know, I mean, yeah. the 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 thing that for me I hated the most was um when people said South African men are oh, they have small bananas and they are 2 minutes. Honey. Okay. <laughs> no. Not yeah. No, I think that's just like a, that. a a very mean generalization, yeah. you know. You know, but yeah. it's not like that. the and also what i've also you know like i've discovered is that it's not even about the size of the banana it's how you work it you understand yeah, so yeah. for me i don't small bananas i mean if it was small i'd have been gone <laughs> <laughs> just bring it out i'm so sorry but if it was small i would have been gone you understand so yeah. i just wanted to put it out there because i mean sex is important especially in a marriage yeah. you want to be with somebody who yeah. is satisfying so for Absolutely. me i know a lot of people like i'm not going to get married to that because men because they can't perform you understand mm-hmm. so that is not true mm-hmm. what yeah. other thing well like i mentioned the abuse parts for me personally with in my marriage i haven't you know i haven't my husband does not shout when he gets upset mm-hmm. he just looks at you and he says you're trying <laughs> yeah you yeah know, so um, i actually yeah. enjoy uh, Sorry to interrupt. I actually enjoy um your YouTube channel whenever you feature your husband. Guys, um if by now you don't know, Tete is a YouTuber, Black and Blending, Black to the Blending. <laughs> I love your intro. <laughs> Thank Please, you. Please um go and subscribe to her channel, go and follow her, watch her content. She's amazing. I love your opinions, girl. You speak it like it is. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I'm here. All right. <laughs> All right, now the next question I want to ask, have you ever been um um a victim of xenophobia, whether be it physically, whether be it verbally on social media and whatsoever? Um yeah, a lot. A lot, a lot. Mm. A lot. I, Jerry, I don't even remember my childhood without it, you know. Um I don't know why people Yeah, I don't know why people find it so necessary to remind you that you don't belong, you know. Yeah. And Like it was it was so sad that I had to suppress who I am. I had to always try and fit in so they couldn't spot mm-hmm. me. You know so yeah. you don't spot that all oh, this person mm-hmm. is like this, you know. So mm-hmm. I mean growing up from I think about grade 5 that's when I started understanding it but from grade 5 mm-hmm. like people had names for me, you know, um they'd call me Dikongo or something. I can't really remember but something like that. But yeah. then when I got into like when I yeah after high school for some reason I don't know people when I tell people that I'm actually Congolese like what you lie but I'm like my whole life <laughs> you know people never mm. ever mistaken to me for South African wow. you know but now that wow. I'm older yeah but I have like family members who um experienced it physically I have never experienced it physically at least I mean like mm. thank god thank god but, mm. yeah emotionally bro it's just like It's it's almost like it's a part of me, you know. Like, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> so, sure. Yeah. And do you ever like engage in um such discussions? Let's say on social media, people are talking about Congolese people. Congolese people are this, this, or foreign nationals are this. Do you ever um interact with people on social media and defend yourself or defend your people? You know what? I try. First of all, I try my best to not get involved, and I feel like if. me right now it's hard for me to even say congolese people are my people because growing up they also rejected me you know so growing yeah. up i was between i'm not too i'm not south african enough and i'm not congolese enough you know sure. so i've always mm-hmm. i was always in between like what can i do to fit in who's ever going to accept 
you know who I yeah, am. Yeah, so yeah. when it comes to that stuff, I mind my business. If you yeah. believe, that's what you believe. You understand? I'm mm-hmm. going to keep my feet mm-hmm. myself, and I'm going to move because, like, growing up for me, it was a struggle because I came here too young, so it was difficult for me to like know more than like Swahili. I only know Swahili. I don't know French. I don't know Lingala, and people look at you like, why? Yeah, and they just like you know you just say like it is what it is. <laughs> wow. And you know growing up at home in Durban as a Congolese national, did you guys speak English or at home or Swahili still? So when we first came to South Africa, we would speak uh French and English. I mean French and Swahili. Okay. And then when okay. we started going to school, our parents also wanted to learn English from us. So we started okay. speaking English and Swahili at home and we dropped the French. So at home I do okay. speak Swahili and I do speak English. Yes. Okay. 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 Fair enough. And um I also want to know what is the hardest thing to adapt to being with a South African man as, you know, a Congolese? I think for me the hardest thing is okay maybe it's because I I've never been married before or whatever but you know when people come to visit there's this yeah culture you have to give them tea you have to always have biscuits you have to always be smiling <laughs> <sighs> like okay for me that was that was just one thing I you know and also there's a there's everybody who is congolese told me not to lose myself trying to be south african like oh you think you're so bad because you're not african now you think you're south african so oh, you're not you know you're not south african or whatever you know and yeah. like okay cool shop and then the other thing on the side is that when i because i'm congolese and the, my husband's side of the family is very proud of it you know they yeah. don't go anywhere and tell people i'm congolese so maybe if my dad is at the supermarket and he meets this nice you know ghanaian woman he thinks she's congolese he'll call me oh i met this woman she wants to say hi and then i said to him oh hello oh i'm actually not uh, ghanaian i'm actually congolese so a lot of that i had to adapt to to just getting the yeah. calls you know from my people yeah. say, oh, i met this person i met that person because they were so proud they did not know yeah. it was overwhelming i didn't like it but i'm just like oh <laughs> oh yeah. it's all love it's all love it is it is but too much it is here <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i'm really grateful but i'm really grateful you know to to have been married to this family it is it is very yeah. really a blessing yeah it is especially because i had wow. a child before you know so and yeah. we have our own biological child so yeah so of, yeah but story wow story. wow <laughs> And I like um how they embrace your your child as well. It's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It is. I mean, you're very rare say, by the way. You mm. would never ever ever You would come never. To you would never. <laughs> you would never say like even his grandpa. Yeah. Like, super close. They are super 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 close. So, yeah, mm. I'm really blessed. <laughs> Let's talk about the food, right? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> You did you guys at home grow up um, still eating Congolese food um they, did they teach you how to make Congolese food and obviously he's eating mabele oh. um uh, <laughs> and how did you have did you have to learn how to make South African food um how how did that go about did you introduce him to your Congolese food the question the question is am I I'm joking um okay so how do you know you get the food now Yeah now we eat a lot of Congolese food because I cook most of the time you know so most okay. of the time we eat you know uh, sombe we eat a lot of vegetables because a lot of vegetable and fish but mm-hmm. i have my moment you know where i throw in the mabele now and again but i mean our yeah. cooking methods aren't that different you know so i can't really oh, say okay. i learned maybe the only thing i learned is mm-hmm. mabele because i didn't know you're not supposed to put salt in mabele <laughs> and i put salt <laughs> so yeah. when he ate it was like mm, girl salt no what did you do here i was trying to give it flavor i was trying to give it flavor spice it up a little bit 
<laughs> oh, okay. okay, so you guys, uh, he, so he's, he has no problem with eating um, um, Congolese food. That's actually beautiful. No hey. problem at all. Sometimes, he, like when we go to visit my mother in Durban, he requests what he wants. No, ma, please, you know, cook a sombe on the kala, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's very, very beautiful. And um, we're almost at the end of the interview, right? Oh. <laughs> Stop being. Um, I want to know, right, would you advise any Congolese woman or any other foreign nationals to get married to a South African man? Definitely. Definitely. Um, I think, you know, when it comes to marriage or relationship, it's not about where you come from. It's about the heart of the person. You understand? Yeah, because, yeah, there, I mean, personally for me, I had a terrible experience with a Congolese man, you know. Mm, so for me, mm. if somebody comes to me and says, I'm thinking of dating a Congolese man, I'll girl run. You know, because mm. based on my experience, you understand? Yeah, so my yeah. experience with uh, obviously being married to a South African man has been amazing. And I would, yay, I'd stand on top of, of, of Kilimanjaro and be like, honey, you're missing out on the good love. You understand? Yeah. But for me, it's not about where you come from. It's not about yeah. what you have. It's about how the person is going to treat you. You know, that's mm. going to love you and all of that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's profound. That's actually beautiful. It, I mean, you can't generalize and say all South African men are just or that. We have an um, we have amazing a lot. In fact, majority of the South African men that I know, amazing husbands, amazing yeah, and fathers. And now I have friends writing you know? in my DMs. Oh, Tete, doesn't he have a brother, a cousin? I'm like, eh, no, girl. <laughs> You know, funny enough, right? Um, I remember when I started uh, dating my husband, and people started knowing that I'm dating a Nigerian, a Nigerian for a national. Um, people would say uh, bad things about Nigerians. I must stay away and whatnot. But now, whenever they, they see, see me, like, Girl, doesn't he have a brother? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just scared he's gonna traffic you or something, girl. <laughs> No, no, I think it's just individuals and people are basing off what they're saying from, you know, from experience, from wow. what they read on the, on, on the tabloids, on the newspaper, on, on the media, you know, sometimes it doesn't... Is, be... And the funny thing is, you can't expect South African news to report about Congolese men in Congo. Yes, they're going to report yes. about the country that you were in. So that's the reason why we see a lot of, you know, South African men doing bad things. We are in their country. You cannot yeah. expect them to show you to glorify Congolese men. You can't do yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. But I, no, I, mean, that is I, think, I, I think my biggest fear, sorry, just to add in, I think my biggest yeah. fear um, was for my son to experience such things, you know, where yeah. people find him because of where he comes from. But the good thing yeah. for him is Congolese being raised by South Africans. Mm, wow. Uh, wow. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> um, Tete, it was great to have you here. Unfortunately, we come to the end of this interview. <laughs> I really had a great time and I learned. Oh, by the way, Tete, uh, when you come to the side, I need you to teach me how to wind your waist like Congolese people. I, I love, <laughs> I so love your TikTok videos. I'm always Thank watching you. them, your YouTube videos on how you guys dance. By the way, is it something that, that, that you are taught? No. Or is it something that it's like you're born with it? I think you're just born with it. And not everybody is like wow. that. Funny thing was, when I was growing up, I was very stiff. So For real? I, I, my brother, oh my God, you haven't seen my brothers. My brothers, their waist, when they move, it's just like, like there's no bones. Like they are really, wow. really, really great. So for wow. me, growing up, I watch them and I envy that. I'm like, oh my God, when am I going to move like that? And I never got, you know, like to move. Or maybe because I never practiced. Once yeah. you only tried it, there was no going back. <laughs> yeah. Was no, and you're back. giving us content here, yeah, hey? I don't think it's even a, something you're born with. I think it's practice. Oh, yeah, it's, I practice. Think it's practice. Yeah, it's practice. Mm -hmm. Just like no, I'm practicing over and over and over again. I suck at my piano, like, jaw. <laughs> 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 Okay, Tete, we can talk forever and ever. I actually don't want this to end, but yeah. you know what? We don't want to waste people's data. We need, we, we got to wrap it up, okay? Thank yeah. you so much for coming through, guys. Please Thank remember, Tete is a YouTuber. She's got a YouTube channel. Please go and subscribe to her channel. Watch her content. Amazing content. Learn a lot about... <laughs> 
black and blending blending blended families basically um and don't forget to subscribe and like this video and until next time bye, bye.